When we are faced with a specification like this, we do not have to try and deal with everything all at once. In fact, with the bottom-up approach, we would just start with a small area of it, focus on that before moving on to something else. Here, for example, we have got administrators, managers, operators, and the tills. But rather than focus on all four areas at once, we could just say, let's think about the administrators, whose job is to keep staff records up to date and keep item details current. Well, let's just focus only on the staff records. One of the things for keeping staff records up to date is the ability to add staff. And therefore, what we could do is put in a little process called add staff. We're not really concerned with anything like leveling at this stage. We're just going to make a note of the processes that we would be interested in. Every process will need at least one input and at least one output. And so we would consider for this add staff process what information needs to come in for it to do its job. Well, we could put an incoming data flow called staff details. At this point, we're not concerned with where this information comes from. We are much more concerned with what information has to come into the process. What information comes out of the process? Well, we're adding staff. And so we'll have a, a staff details flow coming out. But now we have to think a little bit about where is it going? Well, since we're wanting to store the information, we'll have a data store called stuff. And so now we're starting to build up a little picture so that when we want to add staff from somewhere, staff details needs to come into the process. And this process will, whatever else it does, send information out to a data store called staff. The next thing that the administrators might want to do if they can add staff is to delete staff. And so we'll put in another process, this time called delete staff. It too will need some input this time only staff ID, because if the staff ID exists in our data store, then staff ID is all that we need to identify which record to delete. And therefore, the process is going to write the staff ID to the data store. Once we've done that, we can think about other administrator tasks, such as keep item details current. Well, this is going to be very similar to what we've just done with staff. We'll want to add an item. Again, item details coming in, item details coming out. To where? Well, to a data store called items. Notice that typically the name for a data store will be in the plural. If we can add an item, then certainly we can delete it. And as time goes on, with this being a supermarket, we would want to change the item price. All of these processes are just taking data coming in on a flow. Where from? We don't mind at this point. We're just building up little mini pictures and store the information or update the information or delete the information in this data store here. The next thing to consider is what the operator might do via the till. Well, one of the first things that's done is to log in. And the login process will require some credentials and presumably a till ID. Also, some staff details. Why? Well, this process will receive from somewhere some credentials. Those credentials will have to be verified against what is stored in the staff store. And therefore, this process will need to get using these credentials, the staff details from the store to make a comparison. And then having made the comparison and assuming that all is okay, then it's going to send the till ID and those staff details to another store called current user so that we've got a record of who is currently logged in on which till. And presumably the operator will want some feedback about their login attempt and so a login result can be sent back out. Likewise with logout, till ID comes in, we can set the current user for that till ID to be clear, as in no one, 
and then send an acknowledgement back out. So we've started to think a bit about what the operator might do. Now let's turn our attention to what the manager might want. One of the things that the manager will want to do is to list all the staff. So there'll be an input to trigger this process, which will be some kind of all staff request. And the output will be a list of all the staff. Where does that information come from? Well, it comes from the data store staff. And so this process will read the staff details from that store and formulate some kind of list to send back out. Similarly, with listing the till operators. A request comes in to trigger this process into operation and the output from the process will be to send an operator list. Where does the data come from? Well, it's going to come from current user. And so we have a data flow to show that the till ID and the staff details will be drawn by this process from the store for formulating the list. Then what about summarizing the sales for a day? Well, a date will come in. This flow's arrival will trigger the process into operation and then it will send out a report. Where does the data come from? Well, the first thing it's going to do is going to have to come from the till log because this is where the information is being stored. And so the flow can get the till log details for this process. And then the process, having taken that information from the store, can send the report. But that then raises a question of where does the information for this store come from? Well, we will have an operation that, that the operator does, uh, selling an item. So we can have a process called sell item that will take the till ID and the item code. Using that item code, the process will then extract the relevant item details and use that information to store the till ID and the details of the item sold in the till log. And so as each item is sold, its information is stored in the log and that will allow the till log details to be built up over time so that that report can then be generated. When the sale has been completed, that is when all the items that the customer is purchasing have been passed through the till, then we will want to record payment and this will signal the end of the sale. So we'll have the till ID come in and the sale total, which will have been kept by the till as a separate system. And record the payment will then simply send the till ID, the sale total and the payment method into the log. Finally, so that we can see who has been operating the till during this sale, we will need to record at login the login summary and at logout the logout summary so that any sales and payments that are made between a login and a logout will assume to be made by that particular operator.